Okay, friends, another fabulous video for you today. A shrimp and salmon cake with the garlic aioli and a remoulade sauce. It's so simple to make, you're not gonna believe it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and don't forget to ring the bells. Check it out, you're gonna love it. Okay, well, let me show you how easy it is to make this cake. You know, normally when you get a seafood cake in a restaurant, a crab cake or a fish cake of any kind, they bind them with uh, mayonnaise or they bind them with breadcrumbs, and sometimes lots of breadcrumbs. And um, I don't really like breadcrumbs. I find that breadcrumbs dries it out, and, uh, and a mayonnaise, you're not supposed to really cook mayonnaise, so it's not really the right thing to do to put mayonnaise in it. I just find it makes it heavy. So let me tell you how I do mine. I make a shrimp mousse with egg white and I bind the seafood with it. It's really cool. You can make it with any kind of seafood. You can make it with any kind of fish, any kind of, uh, as long as it's a firm fish, like a grouper cake would be fabulous. Uh, you can even do a lobster cake, you can do a crab cake, and you can bind it with a, with a mousse of some kind, a seafood mousse. I'm gonna show you how to make it, which is really simple. It's a fish um, uh, blended with a, a, a egg white. And the cool part about the egg white, the egg white binds it, holds it together, but it's transparent so you don't even know it's in there. It's really cool, easy to do. First thing we're gonna do, we're not gonna use breadcrumb for the outside, we're gonna use panko. And you probably have used panko before, and you know panko is nice, but panko is very coarse. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but you've all, you know what panko is, the Japanese breadcrumb. I like them because they, um, they make a very, very, very crispy, crust on the outside I and mean, you can even use a little bit on the inside to bind it if you need it but if you don't need it don't don't use it so what i'm going to do is say uh, let me tell you what i do now you you know this is very coarse right and i don't like it so coarse so you know what i do i take the breadcrumb right there and i put it in my uh, food processor to make it a very fine crust let me put a little more in here to make it a very fine crust and let me tell you why I do this, is because I believe then less of a crust you have, more even it is and more delicate it is. Now, if you like a heavy crust, bread crust, then, you know, and I do the same thing when I make a chicken scallopini milanese, when I want to put a, a breading on, on fish or seafood, I'll do it this way. I make it nice and fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to process it until it's very, very, very smooth, okay? If you don't have panko, you can use crackers. I like a saltine crackers, unsalt the top. That means no salt on the top, but I was too salty, okay? And this right there is gonna give you an amazing crust. And what I like to do with this, I like to add a little bit of fleur de sel, because obviously there is no salt in here. So a little bit of fleur de sel, salt. I use fleur de sel because I'm half French. So, you know, we like to use fleur de sel, especially with seafood. Beautiful salt. Fleur de sel, the flower of salt. It doesn't really mean that, but that's to translate literally. All right, so look, we got our breadcrumb right here. And now look, look, look. I don't know if you can see it, but it's very, very fine, you see? And this is going to give us a fabulous crust. So I'm going to put it in right here in the lasagna pan. So then I can use, you know what? I just need to do a little bit more. So let me just do just a little bit more because I never make enough and then it makes it difficult to do the show because I, I don't have enough, right? So I'm just gonna make just a little bit. Don't be afraid to run it for a while, okay? It cannot be too thin. Remember, you don't have panko, use your favorite crackers. Crackers, let me tell you why crackers, because crackers have no moisture. And crackers, instead of giving you a a breadcrumb is gonna stick it together, it's gonna to be really nice and, uh, and, uh, and dry. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we got, we got right there. Careful with those blades, boy, they're mean. <laughs> so we got, the, um, we got the crackers ready to go. Now we're gonna make our mousse. For this, I am using black tiger shrimp. You can use whatever shrimps you want, and they are cut in small pieces already. We're going to save some for the seafood cake and for the salmon and, uh, and, uh, and shrimp cake. So some of them we're going to leave whole, and some of them we're going to make a mousse out of it, okay? So I'm going to process them with a little bit of egg white, 
We'll give you the exact recipe on our website. We're going to put a couple of leaves of uh, cilantro, just a couple of leaves of cilantro. We're going to put a little more fleur de sel. Uh, you notice everything is carefully measured, eh? Um, a little bit of ginger. Hey, you know, a lot of people peel their gingers because they got nothing else to do. I wash mine very carefully and then I save it in, with a, and look what I do. You see, I just grate it and I use that microplane grater. Not the one you use for the citrus, the other one, you see? This one right here. This is great for cheese, for chocolate, right? Just a little ginger, don't put too much, just a little bit. And then I got my garlic puree. You know, I make my garlic puree. I got a video on the garlic puree. This is just garlic and olive oil, all right? Just a little bit of garlic. A little bit of ginger. We're going to put a little bit of uh, sriracha. Put whatever hot sauce you want in here. You don't really have to put a hot sauce if you don't want to. Uh, you could put salt and pepper. It'll be just great. Did I put flour of cell already? Yeah, I think I did. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to go and we're going to make a mousse. All right? And we're going to process this. You want to process it, you can put a little cognac in there too if you want. Okay, that'll make it really nice. All right? So now let me move all the stuff I'm not going to need anymore. For this, we gotta process it. Longer you process it, smoother it's going to be. And it's really, really important because we need to use this as a binding agent. So it's gonna bind the salmon. And for this, we have salmon. Look, a beautiful cut in little pieces. I use a, a, a beautiful Atlantic salmon, cut in little pieces. Like I say, you don't have salmon, you can use, um, uh, you, you can use uh, any firm fish. Let me put just a little bit more shrimp over there. You notice I'm very careful on the measurement. It's cooking, not rocket science, eh? We're not sending a man on the moon, friends. We're just making a little seafood cake. All right, so look, this is a mousse right there. I tell you, a little cognac is always good if you have it. Now, oh, guess what? <laughs> I got some right here. I always forget it. Just a little bit of cognac. Ooh, little. Don't make them drunk. Just make them happy. A little cognac gives you a nice flavor to that mousse. Okay? Then we got bell peppers. We got yellow peppers. We got red peppers. And we got green peppers. And they cut to small dice. They gotta be small. They can't got big pieces of peppers in there. It'll interfere, you see? All right, so now we got all of our seasoning in here, right? We got our ginger in here. We got our cilantro in here. We got our, our, our hot sauce. We got our salt. We got all of our seasoning, our garlic, everything is in here, right? So now I'm going to take this, all right, and I'm going to bind this. Let me just take this out of here, folks. We don't need this machine anymore, so I'm going to take it out of there, all right? So now I'm going to take my mousse. Try to be as clean as possible. Uh, I'm going to take my mousse and I'm going to blind it. Now, if you don't want to make the mousse, you can just put egg white. And it'll, it'll work, but then it's not going to bind as well, right? With the, just the egg white. So what happens is if it doesn't bind as well, then you're going to have to put a little bit of breakum to bind it. Okay, but be careful. Don't put too much breakum. Otherwise, you know what happened. Then I might as well go out to a restaurant and uh, a restaurant and does it with breakum. And, uh, and let me tell you something, this is very delicate. And as you can see, it is not, easy, not difficult to do. You notice everything I do is very simple. I'm telling you, friends, you can all become fabulous cooks. Cooking is the easiest hobby in the world to learn, my friends. It really is. Anybody can be a great cook. All you got to do is just understand what, look, look, you see now, look what's happening to the seafood, you see? The seafood is held together. So now, when it's gonna cook, the egg white is gonna be completely transparent, it's gonna bind it all together, but you won't even know it's in there, so you don't have this, uh, this dry uh, um, uh, bread in there, and sometimes you go to a restaurant and, and there's like 25% bread in there. So what I like to do, I like to keep this very cold, so I, I just started doing this, so I add this in the refrigerator until the last minute. You want your seafood to be very cold, always anyway, but, but especially for this, because you want the egg to be cold, you want everything to be cold so it's hold it together beautiful, you see? Maybe I'll add just a little more flour de sel, because I don't think I add enough flour de sel. Right? So now look, this is beautiful, right? Very simple. Now we're gonna make the cake. I got a really cool technique for the cake, okay? For this, you need one of these. You get those at Home Depot. <laughs> 
This is a, a uh, plumbing pipe. It's a three inch plumbing pipe. You want one inch, just one inch of a three inch pipe. You can make it out however big you want it. You can make four inches if you want to make it mean, higher. But this to me is a perfect formula. But use whatever makes you happy. All right. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're, we're going to put it here and we're going to take a ladle. And it just happened in this ladle that I use is a four ounce ladle. Four ounce fits perfect in here. So what I do is I take my cake, my, uh, my seafood, and I make sure it's filled up all the way. Not hippie because it doesn't fit in my mold. You're going to have to figure out what mold you want to use and how it fits, okay? And then what I do, hope you can all see what I'm doing, I'm going to take my, um, my, my uh, four ounce mixture of salmon and shrimp with the shrimp mousse. I'm putting it in the uh, breadcrumb and uh, in the panko crumb. And right here, I'm not going to touch it until it's completely coated. All coated, right? All coated, right? Now, at this point, I want to make a ball out of it, like a nice round ball. I want to make sure it's completely coated because if it's not coated completely, then my hands are going to get all gunky. <laughs> it's a new culinary term, gunky. Now they're going to get all messy, and so will your break home. It's going to get all messy. So, so if I do a lot, I, str I clean my break home in between. So look, I grab the whole thing. It doesn't matter how much break home you grab, because you're only going to keep the break home that is touching the seafood. And you see, look, I go from one hand to the next, right there. See, look, right? From one hand to the next, make sure it's completely cold. Oh, and one more important thing, friends. No cracks. It cannot have any cracks. If you have cracks in it, squeeze them. Squeeze them out and put it. See, look right here, there's seafood. Put a little more crumb. Remember, don't be afraid to put a lot of breadcrumbs. The only breadcrumb is sticking is the breadcrumb that is touching the seafood. All right? So look, we're going to go like this. Right? Very simple, right? So now we're going to take this. We're going to put it right here. We're going to put it right here. Right here, right here. We're going to put it right here. We we'll put it in here like this. Now, I, f I forgot one more tool, so I got it right here in my drawer, all right? And what I like to do is I like to take a spatula and squeeze it really, 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 really tight. Now you see why it was really important to make sure you got the right amount, right? And look, pay attention. Make sure it's like a, now it shouldn't be wet. It should be perfect at this point, right? Now we're gonna take it out right there and check this out. You see? How simple was that to make? You see? Right? So now, we're going to make all of this. Then we're going to put them in a freezer for 15, 20 minutes. So they solidify. Just, just 15, 20 minutes, right? And then I'm going to put them in a fry pan. I'm going to pan sear them, get them beautiful golden brown. And when I'm ready to eat them, I'm going to pop them in the oven at 375 for about 8 to 10 minutes. And they're going to be amazing. Now, that's all you need to do. I'm going to serve them with a garlic aioli and a remoulade sauce. So we're going, to put, we're going to finish them. We're going to put them in a freezer. And then we'll come back and we'll do the whole thing. Okay. The cakes are out of the... Uh, you can put it in a freezer or you can put it in a refrigerator. The secret is to make sure they, are, uh, they, they solidify. Because remember, the only thing that's holding them is the, uh, is the shrimp mousse with the egg white, and so that's kind of like fragile. Uh, so, but if they're cold, it's not a problem. It's not like you bind them with bread. If they're bread, they're not going anywhere. But those are very fragile, they're very delicate. And uh, by the minute the egg white cooks, oop, it's gonna seal them and they're gonna seal it together. So, I got a fry pan going on over here. I love this uh, non-stick cookware, it's, it's, it's called Wall, W-O-L-L, -L, and it's a, um, it's a non-stick cookware. I like it for, uh, for seafood, especially anything with breading on it. I find that it's easier to do it instead of a stainless steel pan. And what I like about those pans, you can pop them in the oven also up to four, 500 degrees. So it's a nice pan if you're looking for a good non-stick cookware. You need a few. I mean, I love stainless steel cookware. I love enamel cast iron. Uh, but I, I have to have a good non-stick um, fry pan, especially for this purpose. I make chicken scallopini milanese. It just comes out better in a, in a nice uh, non-stick fry pan. So I want to make sure that my oil reaches about 350, 365, which is below the smoke point of extra virgin olive oil. And um, so we're good. 
Uh, I got my digital thermometer. If I go into a cold oil, then the, the, the panko is going to soak up. The oil is going to get soggy instead of crispy. So it's really important. When I put them in a fry pan, like you see, I got six of them. When I put them in a fry pan, I'm going to put them in cl clockwork. I'm start at, at 12 o'clock and I go all the way down back around. So I know which one was the first one that I put in. So it's kind of an interesting uh, formula to do. Uh, when you're making, when you're putting more things in a fry pan and they're not going to be in there very long, right? So we take the cake, we put the first one at 12 o'clock and be careful, don't throw it in there, right? And, and the second one at, uh, right there, here you go, three, we're almost at six. And we got there at nine o'clock and here we're about 10 o'clock or somewhere around there, I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't really matter, you got the idea. We know we're starting with this one, okay? Because you're going to see, they're not going to be in there very long, friends. They're, they're going to get golden brown really, really, really fast. And now we're not cooking them. We're just making them beautiful golden brown, but we're not cooking them, okay? This is not cooking. We're going to cook them in the oven. This is to prepare them for the oven. I'm going to cook them in a, in a um, uh, non-stick non seal pad. Seal pad. If you, have, if you have one of those with my name on it, you know you're good. <laughs> if you don't have one with my name on it, throw it away and go get a new one. Uh, they're, they're, ooh, ooh, hey, talking, 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 and then don't pay attention to what I'm doing here. Let's see what you got. Okay, another three and a half seconds. Okay, that's enough. Right there, here you go, look, look, see, see, see? Look, look, look how beautiful they are, see? Look, look at them. Oh, this one should have stayed another few seconds. Well, maybe because I put it in a few seconds later, right? All right, so let's see what you got. I, I don't want them too brown, I just want them nice golden brown, that's all, I don't want too much. All right, let's see what you got here. Here you go, here you go, look at this one, look at this one. Look at this one, too. Look, look at this one, look at it. Okay, so all we're doing now, as we got them beautiful golden brown on all sides, right? So far, so good, eh? Remember, you can make them with a, with a, with a shrimp, with a, with a grouper, with a lobster, with scallops, with crab. Put them with whatever you want. Whatever you want. That's your day. Ooh, take them out. Okay, remember now. We take them out in the same order than we put them in. Maybe this, this side I like a little more golden brown. So I'm going to wait in there for a second. Right? This guy's good. This guy's good. Ha ha ha. It's a little hot. And then let's see how you're doing. Okay, fine, all right. All right, let's not be too picky, right? Okay, so now, now what I'm going to do, friends, I'm going to go in my preheated oven at 375 degrees, and I'm going to cook them for about seven, eight minutes until my internal temperature, and what I mean by internal temperature, I mean internal temperature. <laughs> internal temperature, that means I go inside, and I'm about 140 degrees, 145 at the most, okay? Otherwise, your salmon's gonna be overcooked, but the shrimp's gotta get to 140, okay? All right, so we're gonna go in there now, we're gonna pop those guys in the oven, and we're gonna cook them, and then we're gonna decorate the plate, and we're gonna serve them, and we're gonna have a delicious lunch, or dinner, great appetizer, or a great lunch, or maybe a little arugula salad on top, or so we'll make a fabulous lunch. Okay! We're gonna go in the oven, they're ready to go now. Oh yes, oh yes, they're beautiful. Beautiful, 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 Woo! they hot. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do is I put a little bit of aioli in uh, garlic mayonnaise in, uh, in, uh, in a squeeze bottle to make it easier to plate. And, and I love those plates, I'm gonna use those beautiful plates right here. They, they, it's kind of like a, a, a well, if you will, and it frames the food. I love when I have individual serving to serve it in this plate. Plate is very important, you know, it's frames. So bigger the frame, and, and I think more delicate it is. I got a little stain on that one, so we're gonna put it right here. <laughs> and um, you see? So it's kind of like we have a frame. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my mayonnaise, my aioli, I'm gonna put in the bottom of the plate. Nothing fancy, okay, just like this, right? And then I'm gonna take my, uh, my uh, cakes, and I'm gonna put it right on top of it, just like this. Now at this point, you can certainly serve it like this, put a little arugula salad on top, it would be delicious with a beautiful vinaigrette. You, you don't have to serve with, a, with an aioli, you can serve with a bell pepper coulis, with a tomato coulis, you can do so many things. But today, uh, we're gonna serve it with a remoulade. So we got a remoulade in here, right, a remoulade. Then we made, and which is a, 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 a souped up mayonnaise, if you will, and we're gonna put it right on top of it, just like that, this is delicate. Just leave it like that. It's very, very simple. You see, this is a very elegant and simple preparation that you can all do at home. This is really, really simple to do. 
Make the cake in advance. I promise you, your friends are going to think you became a chef. It's very simple to make. Eh? You go ahead, and I promise you, you're going to love it. Remember, subscribe to our channel so you can see the next video we're doing.